Praise the Lord. Good to see each and every one of you after so long, after a few weeks. Uh, just so good to be back. Um, thank you for the beautiful testimony. Thank you for the beautiful worship, worship team. Can we just give a round of applause once again for them? Well, um, I'm not going to take too long, all right? I'm not a <laughs> professional preacher or anything, okay? I'm just going to share something that God dropped in my heart. Uh, I think that's what, something that's been happening in this season. And it's about being intentional to fulfill your purpose. I mean... Everybody's saying, what's so different about it? Of, of course, everything we are doing intentionally every day, right? I'm going to work. I'm earning. I need to buy a dream car. I need to buy a dream house. Everything I need to do intentionally so that I get what I want. I achieve my dreams. But this, this is why I feel that God saying in, intentionally fulfilling purpose in His way, in God's way. So first of all, what is intention? Intention is a focus of attention on making something happen. And full purpose is why we want to do it intentionally. Why we are doing it. Okay? Why we are doing something. Well, let me share something that, that's that been happening. Right? This has been going on for about one year, nine months or something, my life started during MCO. Um, I, I came to know, I mean, accidentally, I walked into a restaurant near my, my house one day uh, because we want to get some breakfast. So it was very new, but the food was tasty. So just that once in a while, we go and get a breakfast, not every day. So just went in, the food was nice. I just greeted that owner, the, the seller there, but she was like, mm, okay, fine, that's it. Not, not much reaction. I was like, okay, for me, you all know me. La. I mean, kind of friendly, easy to smile and all that. So nothing much response. Like, she might be moody or what. <laughs> you know, I just bought the breakfast and came out. I came back home. It was good, tasty. And the next day, I didn't go. I didn't want to. Something dropped in my heart you need to go back to the shop. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I am not going to eat the breakfast. And then actually, you see, <laughs> I didn't go. Even though it was a strong feeling, I didn't go. Because I feel that it's not needed. I don't want to take that breakfast. I didn't go. The next day again, when I got up in the morning, I was just getting ready for something else. Again, that beautiful voice. It's kind of loud voice, I, I know. It's, it's very, very clear. Go back to the shop and get a breakfast. <laughs> you, you, you know, it's like this time, I really like, okay, you must go. Okay, go. But I don't know what to buy. I just bought something for the sake of buying. I was not really in the mood. I, seriously, I'm not really in the mood, but I just went in. I just say hi. And she again, not much response. She just said, thank you. That's it. Came back. I couldn't do anything there. So it, this goes by as I fast forward this. Um, I have been doing this for almost like continuously about six or seven days. Because they're still prompting in my heart, go, go. Sometimes I just buy something for one ringgit, two ringgit, just go and give it to somebody else because you're not eating it. <laughs> All right. Then I just want to, one day I just said, Okay, something is happening, but I just don't want to say anything. And after that, for quite some time, I didn't go. About maybe a few days, seven days, something, I didn't go. But there was something going on in my heart. I can still hear you didn't go. You didn't go. Alama, what is this? It's like, it's like quite a difficult feeling, you know. You know, like something you need to do, but you're not doing it. And... After a while, maybe after the one week, I just purposely went. Just because I feel I want to go and get it. I went in. To my surprise, she told me, Sister, you didn't come for a few days, sir. Huh? I am like, 
okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sister, I was busy. You know, like, some reason you give and then you just buy something and come out. And then she said uh, that there's a group for the restaurant. So join us. You know, we will send food to your house, uh, all these things. Okay, gave in my number and all this. The next day, in the morning, when I was just praying and as usual, our normal timing with him, Fatpa was like saying, go back to the shop. I said, Papa, this is too much, you know. It's like, why am I supposed to go there when I don't have the need to go there? And go. Okay. Went in. Trust me, I went to the shop in front. I don't know what to buy. Because almost every day I tasted everything that's there. I don't know what to buy. I said, standing. And then the sister just said, come, sister, I have something special for you today. Oh, okay. <laughs> something special. I don't know what is it. So I just bought it. And she just said, are you Christian? That question some, triggered something in my heart. Okay, are you Christian? I said, yeah. Someone who I find who was grumpy, not friendly, suddenly asking me this question. I was like, hey, yes, I am. She said, can I call you after my work? After restaurant over, can I call you, sister? Yes, yes, please do. Because I was in a shock, actually. I was, I don't know how to react. <laughs> you know, they are, they are Hindus completely, so I don't know how to react. So, yeah, you can, you can. So that evening, she called me up and she said, Sister, can you pray for me? I am like, this, when you go to the shop, it's full of idols, yeah? Full of idols. When you see her also, it's completely... And you feel like, she's asking for prayer. Okay. Someone who I really didn't really know, she's just a shop owner, we have no relation. So I just say, okay, what, what, what do you want me to pray for, sister? So she told me a few things about her personal life. That's when I know she was a single mother with the three kids, young girl. And that really breaks my heart. And I could connect because I've been there. I've been there without my father at the age of 22, and I lost him. I know how my, fa my mother went through as a single mother. I could feel it. I can understand. And this one is even worse. The, the youngest boy that she has is just four years old. The father left when he was just four months, when she was four months pregnant. And the elder is just 15 years old. So the struggle she's going through was really true. It was very hard. And yeah, I just prayed. And that night, I just sit at the father and I just said, what did you make me to do? And that's when he dropped this. Sometimes our accidental meetings, our accidental appointments can turn into intentional. If you turn it intentionally, it can become your purpose. If you turn it intentionally, it become your purpose. And since then, I became very intentionally building relationship with them because I don't want to let go. God is showing something that I'm so desiring for so long. What am I really supposed to do? Yes, I am serving in ministry. I'm serving in church. I know God. I know everything. I, I can do things. But deep in my heart, there's always a question mark. What exactly he had called me to do? Doing things that I know and everything falling in place is okay, is good. We are doing a ministry, we are doing everything is good. But is there something even more if you narrow it down to the deepest root of our heart? The Holy Spirit is saying, you are called for this and we haven't started doing it yet. It's God's dream over our life. What is his dream for me? Start looking at that. And going through that one day, I just felt like, okay, now I have started building relationship with this family. It's going on well, and uh, it's good. So one day I was just asking, how else? You know, all as usual, as usual, we always say, how to make them say, uh, say the Lord's prayer? How to make them come to the Lord? Uh? How to bring them to church? Uh? How to make sure they really become Christians? That's my mind, of course, being very evangelistic, can. So, 
I'm just asking God, how, how, what's next? What's next? What should, what should we do? What should we do? He just said nothing. <laughs> Simply nothing. He dropped me this one verse in my heart. I think all of us knows this word, Colossians 1.16. For by him, by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities, powers, all things were created through him and for him. Thank you, Uncle Jacob. Wow, he memorized that. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you see, I have, we have come across this verse many times. But in that situation, it was very sharp that this verse just like boop up. And, and it, just, it just come up so clearly that he's saying all things. Everything is from him. And everything is for him back. Everything come through him. And he said all things. That means like he's saying to me like every single one that you are meeting every day, every single one that you're facing every day is important to me. They are created for me. They will come back to me. They have to come back to me. That's, a, that's his dream. And that really like of course, I know this verse so many times, but that, that really like something kind of like shift another thoughts in my heart that he sees, you know, he's a God of salvation. All of us knows this. He's a God of salvation. There's no doubt about this. But sometimes, am I taking the role to decide when they're going to get saved? Am I thinking that I can do everything so that they will be saved. But he's saying that, see, everyone is important to me. Everything is coming back to me. Everything is by me. I know what I need to do. But now, what you supposed to do as my child? That's the question that, that's been coming back to my heart. So it's like, am I really being intentional to fulfill the purpose that he had called me? Am I really being intentional to fulfill the reason why he had saved me nine years ago? Am I really being intentional to know why I'm still breathing today? And that's when, he, when, when, when I know this, it's like, okay, it's time to know his dream. Throughout our life, we had learn enough Bible studies, we have gone through many trainings, we are still having fellowship every day, we come, every week we come to church, we have this beautiful family to encourage each other, we're hearing many testimonies. What are we going to do about it? How am I supposed to make sure, like what God says, everyone around you is important to me? That means, if I'm going to the office, the one sitting beside me is important to him. They might not be a Christian, they might not be a believer, but that soul is important to him. When I go to the shop, and I go to the grocery shop, that soul that, that's there is important to him. So how am I supposed to make a change so that God, like what we're seeing, all the earth will praise his name? He's saying, all the earth praise his name, shout, here, shout out his name. But how much am I involved in it? So that, that's, that really like, okay, it's time for me to start doing something. Now, I cannot do anything on my own. Papa, you tell me. You tell me. First, he said, know my dreams. Know my dreams. How are you going to live intentionally? Know my dreams. What is his dreams? Simply, basically, his dreams is salvation, healing, restoration, right? To the whole world. To who? To everyone. Everyone means every people, every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every single soul. 
So that is his dream. And he wants us to keep glorifying him forever so that we can enjoy our life with him forever. Because that's the beauty of him. He have done everything for me. If he was not intentional about this redemption plan, I do not know where we are. All of us know that he have created me even before the foundation of the world for good works. So what and how am I going to do it? Unless I know his dreams for my life, I can't do it. I will keep doing what my heart keeps telling me to do. That's it. So, his plan is the salvation, is the healing, is the restoration for our neighbors, for our relatives, for our mothers, for our fathers, for our cousins, my niece, who still do not know them. Yes, I am safe. I'm good. What about them? So, this is the first thing that he says, first, you want to live intentionally, know my dreams. Once you know my dreams, simple, align yourself to my dreams. Align ourselves. How to align ourselves? It's, it's, it's kind of very, very subjective. How to align? Huh? How to align? He's just saying that if you want to align to his dream, there are certain things that we had to do. There might be some time that you need to sacrifice. There might be some things that you need to go through in order to touch that person, to touch that particular person that God has put in your life for you to fulfill that purpose. There are certain alignments that need to be done. We cannot be always be in the comfort zone and then think that something going to happen. There are certain times that God says that he wants to take me out from that comfort zone, put me in some place where I'm completely uncomfortable. But as long as I know that I'm doing what he wants me to do. For example, I said just now, I was not in the mood to go to the restaurant at all because I was just not in the mood. But he's trying to say, even if you're not in the mood, when I'm saying, when you are hearing me, do it. It reminded me of the time where he was in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying and the time is coming. He was having this heaviness in his heart. If and only if he had changed his mind, I'm not in the mood, you know, Father, to go through this. <laughs> if he had said that, oh my God. But he did it for you, for me. And now Papa is saying, my spirit is in you. You are supposed to do it. You are carrying my glory. You are now the light. You are now the salt. The light that cannot be hidden means you start shining. You need to do something so that the one who's still in the darkness knows me. And, and <laughs> that's, uh, that's another thing that I said, okay, there's a certain time that I need to sacrifice for this family. I know I need to start being intentional for this family. And thirdly, once we start being very uh, intentional about building the relationship, it's very easy because we will start focusing on the purpose. Okay, now this family, I'm coming back to that, where she keep calling me sometimes at night to pour out her heart. Sometimes it takes about half an hour. And I'm a person who sleeps very early. 8.30, I shut down ready. 9, nine o'clock, I shut down ready. But sometimes the phone will ring at 9.30 and she will be crying and, you know, she asking for prayer and then sometimes problem with the teenage girl and all that. I don't have all the solution here, but I was there sacrificing my sleeping time a bit half an hour, sometimes 45 minutes, one hour, or even texting, you know, so that I can just console her. And that become my purpose that this family need to know him. This is my assignment already. I can understand God is using me to, 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 to do something for this family. And day by day, you know what the changes I could see? So beautiful that 
this person, you know, she don't really know English much. She was not re-educated. But every time she says something, I used to say, or I used to text her, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everything she's happening, I said, praise the Lord. And to my surprise, last week, last week and a few days ago, it's been like one year, now, ten months now, I mean, one year, nine months now, she put in her status, WhatsApp status, praise the Lord. Out of nowhere, out of nowhere, someone who have never seen sharing such a status where she knows all her contacts, which is all the Hindu family, all the Hindu people is watching, seeing that status and she put that praise the Lord. Because I've told her what, she keep asking what is praise the Lord. And I said, I'm praising the living God, my Jesus, that, that's with me. So I believe that he's the one who made your sales goes well today, you know, all these things. And there were times, there was once I didn't go for about one week because of something else. She told me, can you just like walk into the shop, sister? Just walk into the shop. I said, why? For what? I'm not buying anything, sister. I'm quite busy. She said, if you walk in, uh, that day the sale become very complete. She said, everything sold off. I said, <laughs> like... Really? Okay, it's not about me. It's about the presence of Him who goes before me. The presence of the Lord that's going before me. He's setting everything true for her, for her. He's making her start seeing things that she have never seen before. I love that. I'm enjoying this. And my purpose, and now I'm being so intentional in talking anything to her. I'm being very careful with the word I'm using upon her. Because not only her now, but my relationship with the kids has become better. And last week, after all these years, the kids now starting to ask, Mom, why do you need to put put? Ruby Akka don't put it. They call me Ruby Akka. Ruby Akka don't put it. Why are you? The mother will come up with all kinds of answers, you know, right? All this, you know, this tradition, this religion, things, and everything. But I know this Putu issue is a big issue in temple Hindu family. Huh? I know. Huh? My mummy used to. <laughs> so, oh, man, it's a Putu. So, okay. <laughs> but now we know. All this is not necessary. It's just about a matter of your heart and you walk with the God. So, when these things, there are certain things, not only this, it's just a small issue. There are certain issues that these kids starting to see. Why Akka is not going to temple, but we have to go to temple. Why we have to worship this, 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 this. Why we need to put flowers. Why we need to light up the lights. And how much the mother can answer. I'm sure some of you sitting, Vilavan is laughing here. I think she's going through something like that. <laughs> she's smiling. So I'm, I'm just saying that this, it's not because, it's not something I have done. It's because I'm just being intentional to what God is asking me to do. And I'm just being there as a vessel. We pray that God make me a vessel. God is ready to make us a vessel. Are we ready? That's the question. <laughs> Now, that's the question. You're praying every day. Yes, God, make, make me a vessel. But when he's ready to make you as a vessel, am I ready to go out of my comfort zone to be that vessel? The vessel that make a change in someone's life. So, I just want to share this today that, um, you know, all creation, it's not only... I mean, the way every one of us have a, our salvation story, how God came to us and how we are saved. How about the rest? How about the rest of the world? Am I not going to make changes in, the, in my society? I'm saved. I'm good. My family. If I don't make a change in my society, if I don't make a changes in my community, I don't make a change in the world. But what, what, what are the heroes of the Bible did? What did our apostles do? How Jesus came to us? How this news came to us? If they didn't go through such suffering, if they didn't go through something out of their comfort zone, I don't know. And I, and I like 
this thing, this um, testimony that Sister Helen was sharing that day. If you have re if you have seen the miracle moment, yeah, she was in a place where. You know, they were having these idols and she keeps saying that the one who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. You know, she keeps saying that intentionally. And you see, throughout the seasons she was there, they were not saved. The friend were not saved. Okay. So sometimes God gave you assignment that may be temporary, seasonal, could be permanent. But the most important thing, am I really sensitive to that purpose? Wherever, wherever I am. So she was very intentional about sharing that, about saying that. And even though after she left the, 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 the place, nothing happened when she was around. But after a few years, when she heard the salvation of her friend, not only the friend, but the whole family was saved. You see, we will not be able to see the salvation immediately sometimes. I don't want to take... It's like, oh my God, I prayed so much for them, but they were not saved. Lah. How you know? It might be 10 years from now, it might be 5 years from now, it might be next year, it might be next month. Who am I to decide? They, that whenever I share something, when I show God, they must be saved immediately. Who am I to decide that? Did God promise that somewhere? I don't know. I'm leaving this with you. I just feel that, um, you know, every one of us has a purpose. And, and this world, actually, all the sons and daughters, all of us have an assignment. All of us has a purpose. All of us have a gifting. All of us have a calling to do what we're supposed to do. But the question is coming back, am I really being intentional to do what God has called me to do? And... Those who are in the darkness, you know, as Sister was, was, was singing, he heals the broken heart. And, uh, you know, there's such a beautiful song. So many broken hearts out there. So many. Even though they might be low, they might be rich people, they might be someone who's really have everything. But there's something missing in their life. They won't be searching for that. Am I going to make a change in their life? Simple. What Papa was saying to me, how many times have you actually not conscious of my presence in the 7-Eleven that you walked in that day? Into the 7-Eleven that I walked in that day. 7-Eleven. <laughs> when I go to the grocery shop, get something, just a bread, and being very conscious about his presence. That's my question. <laughs> and he said, yeah. Because on that day, there was somebody in that store who was not having enough funds to buy something for their kid. How many times I, have I missed saying something that I need to say to the counter girl or the, the, one, the cashier boy there? Maybe they need something at that moment. The word, or that's just a word maybe. That word could have transformed them. We do not know. So I just like to, you know, say that the world is yearning. The world is looking forward for the sons and daughters' revelation. If we don't take that mental and start doing what we're supposed to do, Papa's dream of seeing the whole world safe, to see his creation coming back to him, when is when it going to be? Am I like, and can you like just go to the next one? I think this is the worst. Yeah. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of sons and daughters. We are the sons and daughters. Bring more. Bring all the sons and daughters to him. Come on. I just want to encourage us that as I'm speaking, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of like sure that God is showing you someone in your life today where you need to just being intentionally start building the relationship, start building the trust, start building the, the connection with them so that not immediately you just say, you know, believe Jesus, you know, that's when you'll be going to heaven. If not, you will be, you know, this. 
na 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 god because nowadays people is just have so many questions so be careful just trust in his leading start building the relationship give that space where they are comfortable enough to share about themselves to you and you are also comfortable enough to share and there will be a wonderful relationship that can start happening changes can be happening and this friend i started just my little friendship with her but now i can see something happening in the children's mind god is transforming something in the next generation from one so there's a there's three kids and they are saved as another whole family i'm looking at it like that you know they might not be saved when i'm around or what but i know god is doing something just because i'm intentionally us and allowed him to do and i took the inten- initiative or intentionally start pursuing what he wants me to do that's it so every one of us has a purpose romans 8:19 yeah romans 8:19 have already said in psalms 138 8 is just another verse to say the lord will fulfill his purpose for me your set purpose love o lord endures forever do not forsake the work of your hands he will never let us down when we start digging the first step he will never never let us down he knows because as long as we go according to his purpose to fulfill his dream we are good we are good right so i just want to close with this to you no i told you earlier that i won't be preaching too long i'm not a professional <laughs> <laughs> it's just the last slide please okay this is one of the <laughs> one of the quote that came through that you know lee strobel i'm not sure how many of you know lee strobel he's one of he's an atheist he was a criminal uh, i think he was a investigative journalist and he was an atheist just by a simple act of somebody changed his life and today he's one of a you know famous christian author and he cannot stop sharing about the lord and this is one of these good i'm all for lifestyle evangelism but i'm also in favor of intentionally intentionality where we seek out opportunities for spiritual conversations and are equipped to explain the gospel and why we believe it seek out for the opportunities it's right in front of our eyes every day the one be sitting beside our office the one in front of us the neighbor b- beside us our grandma everyone someone is just right there in front of us every day just just being very intentional just be sensitive if he has to speak just go and say something good of hope to them or something who knows who going to be transformed right so I'm just going to leave this with questions and uh, just just for thoughts because this is what I was pondering so I just feel that I want to share with you because you are my brothers and sisters and all of you are so important to me I love you all and this is it what is my life for what do I really want to achieve and how am I going to contribute to the society community around me with him right so that's it I would like to invite brother Raju please